today's video I'm reviewing the camisole from Stylewark. It's a loungewear camisole. Let's get started. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name's Claire. If we're just meeting over here, I talk about plus size dressmaking. If you're looking to be inspired to learn and to grow your confidence, then do hit that subscribe button down below because I bring videos to you every week. So if you've been a long term viewer of mine, you will know that I've been making clothes along with the Great British Sewing Bee. It's a series that I've got on my channel. And a couple of weeks ago, they were sewing loungewear, so I decided I needed to sew a camisole. I'd never sewn one. I did need a camisole pattern because I wanted to sew some for under my garments, which I haven't done yet, but that is a plan of mine. And I also needed some nightwear. So actually, if I went looking for a pattern, it was money well spent. And I did have a look at a few patterns in my stash, but none were just quite right for what I wanted. And so I looked on the internet and I did find a pattern by Stylework. It's the loungewear camisole, which you can see here. And so I purchased that and made that up. And that's what I've got here. So I've got my twirl there and my final make there. So a little description of the pattern, it's got a v-neck at the front and the back, it's got side bust darts and it's got a very soft curved hem at the bottom. It also comes with facings for the inside. So the pattern comes with two lengths, so you've got a top length and you've got a dress length. It also comes with a free face mask. So that's not like a COVID face mask, but that is a face mask that goes over the eyes when you sleep. So that's a nice little extra that they've added in there. So this pattern is super versatile. You can wear it to bed. As I say, that is one of the things that I bought my pattern for is to wear a nighty to bed. But you could also, depending on the fabric you use, you could wear it outside as a top or a dress in the summer. It'd be a very light dress, so you would want it to be quite warm if that was the case. And that would be quite cooling on you if you got overheated quite easily. You could also wear it as loungewear, so wear it around the house, which is what the name of it is for. So I guess that's what its intended use is for so there's lots and lots of reasons you could wear this and actually it's an essential in my pattern stash and i'm so pleased that i actually have it and actually if you have the ogden cami then this would be a great alternative if a the ogden cami didn't go up to your size and b if you needed darts because the ogden cami doesn't have darts and it only goes up to either 18 or a 20, I can't remember which, but I'll get onto the measurements of this pattern in a second. Yeah, it is a great, great alternative to the Ogden Cami. Now, a couple of years ago, I did produce a video about the Ogden Cami, about how to grade it up. So if you do have that pattern and you want to grade it up, do check my description box or the end cards at the end of the video and you'll find a link to my video where I show how to grade it up. Actually, that video is really good for showing you how to grade any pattern up because it just shows you the fundamentals of how to grade it up. And once you know that, you can apply that to any pattern. So do check that video out if you haven't seen it already. So this pattern, the loungewear cami, comes up to a size 30. And that is a 58 and a quarter bust, a waist of 50 and a half and a hip of 61. And that's in inches. Just to give you some context, my bust is a 49, my waist is a 46 and my hips are a 56. So I fit nicely within that pattern size range. So let's talk fabrics. I used viscose fabrics for both of them. They're both viscose, different types of viscose. I think that might be a blend. It's quite thick, but it's very, very slippery. And that might be a cotton blend. I'm not 100% sure, um, but they are both viscoses. 
Now, if you're going to make this pattern up, I would recommend that you do it in a very lightweight fabric. So you're looking at viscose or rayon, you're looking at silk or satin, or even a really lightweight cotton. The pattern does say cotton as well. I'd probably steer away from cotton. I'd be looking at more silk satins and viscoses. So this is a twirl that I made up. I made this up for the sewing bee and I did it really, really fast at a time when I wasn't feeling too great mental health wise. So I was just surprised I got it finished and I made loads and loads of mistakes. For my twirl, I just really wanted to make the pattern straight out of the box and then see what adjustments I like. I tend, I have recently been doing that quite a lot where I look at the pattern and I won't adjust it as such right out of the bat. I will just make it up and see how I get on with it. And then it's easier for me to work out what adjustments I need. Over time, I'll know the adjustments I need to make and I can make them before. But I think making a twirl, it's a little bit of effort up front, but it's really, really worthwhile doing. So this is my twirl. The neckline was stretched out because I didn't stay stitch it because I was in such a rush to get it finished. I just powered through and I didn't stay stitch. And then my neck was stretched out. So I attempted to bring it in with a pleat, but I didn't sew the pleat in properly. And it just looks like a hot mess there now. This fabric was one of the very first fabrics I ever bought when I started sewing about five or six years ago and I had a remnant left and I had just a lot I had just enough left to make it up and when I did the facing I had to cut the facing down the middle in order to be able to get it all out of the fabric but actually it doesn't matter because it's on the inside and that's a little trick that you can use if you're short on fabric just see if you can put another seam in and sometimes that means you can get a garment out of a certain amount of fabric when other times the fabric would have went to waste so that's a really good thing to do and actually i think when you have a seam put in there it strengthens the garment a little bit more as well i also was being super lazy and didn't change my serge of thread so i've got green thread but it's on the inside and it's a 12 so who cares so looking at the line drawings and the information on the actual pattern i knew straight away that i would need it a little bit longer I wanted it to cover my bum and my tummy so I knew off the bat that I would need to lengthen it and I did do that straight away and I actually quite like the length. If I was going to wear it outside with leggings I would probably give it another two inches as well so four inches total but for bed this is absolutely fine. So I filmed some footage after I made this up and I'm going to insert that now. So here is my completed twirl. If I come up close, you can see I've completely messed up that neckline. I didn't stay stitch it and then I had to put a little pleat in that hasn't even sewn properly. And then the facing is not staying underneath. So when I make the proper one, I need to ensure that I stay stitch and understitch this neckline. Straps don't look too bad where they're sitting, but I can feel they're slightly off. And when I walk around, they slip down. And you can see my bra strap there. So what I want to do is bring it in. Because actually I wasn't sure I stretched this out. I thought the... I thought it sat too wide. So what I'm going to do is bring the straps in an inch. Otherwise it's quite a good fit. I'm just going to sew it up as is. And we'll see how we get on with that. So as you can see from that footage, overall it was a really good fit. I wanted to bring the shoulder straps in. And actually I should have moved the dart down at that point And I never did. And that was a big mistake. So I could probably have moved my dart down a couple of inches. But I didn't. I just It wasn't on my radar to do that for some reason. Which is a little bit odd. So what I did next is I went to my pattern pieces. And adapted those pattern pieces. So I'm going to insert that footage now. Where I show you what I did. So this is my front bodice pattern. Here is the centre front, so here is the tip of the V and it goes up to the strap there. So what I found when I tried on my twirl was that the strap sits too wide. So here's 
This is the sleeve or the arm side. So that's the armhole. I need to keep the width because the width was nice. So I just need to redraft this top bit so that the strap sits a bit closer this way. So there's a really simple way of doing that. And I'm going to show you that now. So you'll need some paper. I've just sellotaped two A4 pieces together. You're gonna need a pen. I would recommend you use a pencil or a biro, but I am using this. So we've got a join line for the pattern piece just there. If you haven't got that, say you use the A0, just draw a horizontal line across, lining it up with the centre front so you know it's straight. So you'll get a ruler, just line the ruler up with the edge there and then just draw a line. I don't need to do that because I've got this line here and I'm gonna use that line. So as you can see, I've got that line lining up with the bottom of the paper there. So I've got the edge of the center front alongside this line, this cut line of this paper. This would be the center front of our new pattern piece. However much you wanna move it towards your center front, measure that on your pattern piece. So I want to move mine over by an inch. So I've measured an inch in there. So I've moved my pattern piece towards me over here an inch. So the inch point lines up with the edge there. So as you can see, it, I've marked it in pen there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to trace around um, edge of the pattern piece. As you can see, I've just quickly traced around the top edge of the pattern piece. So if we line it up again, there we go. So it's exactly where it should be. So you wanna move the center front of the pattern piece over to meet the edge of the paper again. And line it up with your line that you've drawn here. Line that up with the bottom of the paper again. And you can see there that my pattern piece the new one I've drawn is moved over from the actual, this one that I have here. So what we wanna do now is carry on that line and then go down like that. There we have most of the top of our pattern piece, but we have a little adjustment to make. When we line this up, you see the new shape is quite a bit higher than the pattern piece. So in order to have the same front of the original design, just mark where that pattern piece starts, which is there, which is about, for me, it's three quarters of an inch lower. Then you wanna get your ruler. So then you wanna draw a line from your new mark on the original center front up to your strap line. If you wanted thicker straps, you could just adjust that by putting some extra width on each side and then blending the curve in. And don't forget, whatever you've done on this front piece, you also need to do on your back piece. So I hope that helps. That's a super easy adjustment to make, and you need to make that to your front and your back pieces, plus your front and back facing pieces as well. I am going to need to make further adaptions from those adaptions you just seen. So do watch to the end of the video to find out what I had to do before you attempt to make those adjustments yourself. Can I just take a moment to ask if you're really enjoying this content that you do like my video down below, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like it and we'll get back into the content. So now I've made my adjustments to the pattern piece, it's time to cut out my second fabric, my final fabric, my fashion fabric, and get making that one up. The fabric I decided on was this, I've got loads of this, and it's just some fabric that I had from when I was running my shop earlier on, a couple of years ago. Um, had loads of it and I thought, it's for a 90, I can just use this. So that's what I did do. I actually wanted to use this fabric here. This was also in my shop, but this sold out like hotcakes and I've got like about a meter left and it just wasn't enough to make my pattern with. I think I might have used uh, just under two meters for my final make. And partly because I lengthened it, it was a little bit more. But yeah, how beautiful is that? So for the final one, the very first thing I did was to stay stitch the neckline. So I stay stitched all around the front, all around the back, 
and under the arms I did that on my front and my back and my front and my back facing pieces as well and that just ensured that it wasn't going to stretch out as I was handling it where you have to attach these straps it can get quite fiddly and you have to like put a lot of pins in and stuff and handle it quite a lot so it is important that you do stay stitch. That was another adjustment that I made that I forgot to mention was that I significantly shortened these straps. So when I was making my twirl, I pinned the straps to me to see how long I would need them. I probably took off about four inches total. Now, when I made the final one, it was a tad too short. So I probably would have left another inch or so on but actually it's fine as it is. So as I say, I stay stitch and then I put my darts in. How fiddly is it like doing darts in viscose fabric? Now a really, really good tip, which I mentioned in a few videos ago, was to use starch spray. I've got this starch spray just here. And what you do is you just give it a quick spray of your fabric let it air for a few minutes to dry and then use it and your fabric will be stiffer while you're working with it and then once you wash it it'll wash out so that's just a really great power tip for you to use now did i take my own advice no i didn't take my own advice so i was struggling with my um darts but actually they came out quite well apart from their position for some reason i decided that I didn't need to move the darts. I do not know why, because they're sitting like about two inches higher than they should have been. And that's partly because I brought the straps up. Where you bring the straps up, it brings the whole garment up. And so it will shift the position of the darts. So that's something to bear in mind when you're shortening your straps, whether you will need to move your darts. I created my faces and surged the bottom edge and just left it like that, it's on the inside. If it was on the outside, I wouldn't leave serge edges like that. Then I French seamed the front and the back, and I forgot to mention, but I did that on my twirl as well. I did French seams. I don't know if you can see that because the fabric's all the same, but I've got a French seam there. A French seam is where you sew the fabric wrong sides together, and then you trim the seam allowance, turn it in the right side, and sew it again, and then the whole seam is inside of itself so to speak you only want to use that on very light fabrics because otherwise it will add too much bulk so i did that and then i attached my facings to the main piece with pins attached my straps being super super careful not to get them twisted and i double checked before i sewed them down and then sewed that down then i understitched it which I would show you my understitching, but it's the same colour as the fabric. Understitching, which is where you stitch a line of stitching very close to the edge on the inside piece, just means the fabric will roll to the inside and you won't see the seam on the outside. And then I just did a quick and dirty hem. Now I probably should have taken more time and effort with my hem i should have made some bias binding actually and finished it with bias binding but i just surged and turned it under and it's finished it was finished in an hour or two it's just a really quick simple make just a quick mention of the instructions now style work are traditionally not the easiest instructions to understand if you're a beginner um they are more aimed at intermediate level however I didn't look at the instructions in this. Although I've never sewn a cami, I did. Well, have I sewn a cami? I said at the beginning I haven't sewn a cami, but actually I've sewn the Ogden cami, so I have, and I knew what that was like. So I didn't need to follow the instructions, so I didn't. So I can't comment on how difficult they are, but if you've made a cami before, you won't need the instructions. It'll be very intuitive. The instructions should be fine and if they're not you can refer to other instructions if you've got other cami patterns you could refer to them or just look it up online and you'll find someone who is explaining how to do it but actually i think you'll be fine with the instructions i have heard that style arc are looking to improve their instructions 
I'll put a quick screenshot up here of the instructions so you can just see what they're like at a glance. So I'm going to insert some footage now of me wearing my final make and showing that off to you. Excuse the washing machine. Um, so this is my final one. So as you can see, I've brought the straps in a bit. Well, about an inch, actually. I took more care with the front, so that's sitting really nicely. It needs an iron. This has just been shoved on the chair for a few days. As I mentioned before, I've extended this pattern by two inches. It would have been quite a bit shorter. But I knew off the bat that I would want it to cover my bum. And it does cover my bum nicely. So I'm getting a bit of weird shaping around there. And I think it's just because the dart is in the wrong place. So there's the dart on there. I don't know why I didn't think I needed to move the... I don't know why I didn't think I needed to move the dart. So I need to bring it down probably about an inch and a half, two inches and also extend it out about an inch. And I think once I do that, it, this will go away and it will fit me a bit better. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with it. I am just going to wear it to bed. Um, so it's not a huge issue. I want to make some camis for wearing underclothes, so I will fix this issue. I might even take it in a bit. Could do with coming in, but I think actually, I think it may have come from bringing this in, because normally the way I would bring a shoulder in would be to cut a line down there, cut a line there and rotate it. And that means you get more excess in your dart. But I didn't do that. So that could be why. As you can see from that footage, it's an overall really good fit. The only issue I had was a little bit of pulling just around here. You know, if I've got my arms down, you can't see it, but I will fix it for next time because obviously if I'm going to wear it under a garment, I need it quite skimming over my skin. So just bringing the dart down to the right position will help with that. And so that's no issue. Why is my neck? Look, my neck sits there. I get that on every single garment I wear and I don't know why I've got, I must have a misaligned shoulder. So would I make this pattern again? Absolutely I would make this pattern again and I fully intend on doing so. Darren says this is good so he doesn't have to hold the camera. I've got two pyjama tops that I didn't have. I tend to just sleep in my underwear and now I can sleep in these and all is good in the world. It's a question of the day. Have you made a cami top and how did you find it? Do you think it's a beginner sewing pattern or a more intermediate? Which pattern did you sew? Do let me know downstairs in the comments. If you really got value from the content I showed you today, perhaps you'd like to check out this video. It's to how to grade the Ogden cami up or maybe check out this playlist here, which is all my review videos for plus size patterns. So there's lots and lots of information in there, including lots of adjustments. And I'll catch you in the next one. Happy sewing. Bye.